You may have noticed you haven't seen much from us in the last six weeks or so, apart from Jamie's detailed technical videos about the installation of our water maker, which is very exciting. We're going to do the final bit today. We're going to do the testing. Well, it's been a while. It's been what feels like a long while, too long in fact. And we've chosen a rather beautiful, glorious day with hardly any clouds in the sky. It's a typical English autumnal morning. It's got that slight bite in the air, but uh, it's fresh and uh, visibility is very good. Uh, we'll explain in a bit why we are going out. But first of all, I've just got to negotiate a rather busy uh, canal way. There's quite a few boats parked up either side of the marina. So we'll get this out of the way and then we'll uh, enjoy our little trip up the canal. So the reason we haven't been out of the marina for a good six weeks or so, um, we've been keeping quite a low profile, is because there have been lots of jobs to do on the boat. Hopefully the water maker will be working okay. We've got solar panels that work, we've got heating that works, we've got an engine that works. Just need to get the generator going. There have been a number of things that have been going on behind the scenes. A um, couple of visits to hospitals and checkups and um, various tests that have been done. And um, I've got to have an operation at some point. Who knows when that's going to happen, but I do have to have an operation on my foot. I've been trying to write my book, which takes time, and Jamie has got some big projects that he's working on. So it has meant keeping quite a low profile from that point of view. Hopefully in the next few weeks, things should calm down again and we should have a bit more time to see a bit of what it's like in the autumn because this is new for us and it certainly is changing. The bird sound has almost disappeared. They're all gone. They all came for the summer. They all went mad and produced babies. Chicks have flown the nest and now everyone's very quiet again. Okay, so the reason for coming out this way is because we want to test our water maker, our water purifying system. And one of the problems that we've got is where we're based currently, we are literally 20 metres away from the fueling depot. So it's not really an area I want to be drawing water from the canal. So we thought we'd go a little bit further out where the water could be a little bit cleaner. Um, Given the choice in the future when we do start making water from the canal, we will be avoiding places, busy places where there's a lot of traffic, fuel depots, marinas, that kind of thing. So we'll only ever draw water from the canal when we're just a little bit further away from that kind of traffic. And that is what we are planning to do today. So we're literally just going around the corner up to one of our favourite little spots. We haven't been here for months. Um, Marley is very excited about it because it is a great dog walking area and uh, hopefully there'll be no one else there. We'll be able to test the water purifying system um, by sticking the hose out the side of the boat at this location, which we are literally around the next corner coming up to now. So while we're moving along, I bring some of the plants in. It just makes it easier when it comes to untying and tying up the lines. Uh, I don't destroy the plants and I have plenty of room at the front to move around. So in here at the back there, that tall plant, that is the whole load of wild seeds that have gone ballistic and they are usually full of insects, which is great. There's the pepper tree next to it. I don't know which pepper it is because it came, went into the ground and I haven't got any any information tells me which particular pepper, but it's lovely. And then behind me, we've got some, what have I got? Oh yeah, there's parsley, rosemary, and basil. And the parsley and the basil are grew from those pots you get in the, in the supermarkets. And the uh, rosemary, I actually did get a cutting sent to me from the RHS. I'm hoping this rosemary bush will flourish because I understand that rosemary is supposed to be really good for you. Now, when I planted these tomatoes, there are three big uh, containers there full of tomatoes. Earlier in the year, they were only about four inches high, and I had no idea what to expect because I'd never grown a tomato in my life. So we have had tomatoes non-stop for about two months, perhaps even longer. And look, it's almost October, and they are still <laughs> producing. Look at them, there's loads of them. So I've been absolutely thoroughly pleased with myself. Um, I can grow stuff on this boat and I'm really excited about what I'm going to do next year.
So here we are. Pretty quiet. I can hear a train somewhere in the distance. That's about it. Not much in the way of bird song, obviously. Just a little bit now and again. Oh, but it's so tranquil here. Just love it. Long may it last. Okay, phase one of testing, stage one of our off grid water purification system. What we're going to do for starters is just run the system in the bow of the boat. We want to make sure that there's no leakages or air blockages. Now, normally, if you remember, we installed it over there and that's where we'll run it from in future. But just for today's test, we just want to run it outside. And all we're doing is providing power to it for the pump. And we have two hoses. This hose we dump into the canal and you can see it's got this coarse filter here that will uh, filter out all the big horrible nasties in the canal. Take it through the stage one system and out the other end this is our product water that we would normally be putting into our tanks but just when we do this first test we're just going to dump it back into the canal. It's pretty straightforward. So let's uh, get the unit and put it in the bowel. If you remember I just clipped it against the wall here with some four gate clips nice and tight and then it slides out up we go and into the bow in among all the tomato plants <laughs> I think it should be okay there for testing. So that's where we would normally fill up the tanks. And uh, right, let's test it. We could water your plants with this. Oh, useful. Okay, so the trick with this is obviously we don't want to dump it into the bottom of the canal where it's all silty. And at the same time, we don't want it resting on the surface where it may go get blocked with floating things like leaves and what have you. So uh, I think in the future, what we may do, and this is a trick we learned off Steve, who we've been talking about with his own water purification system, is to put some kind of float permanently fixed about here, let's say. So when you drop it in the water, it always floats just beneath the surface like so. But anyway, the point is, is that uh, I think for this exercise, we'll just get Liz to hold it in position. Okay, that's good, it's staying in place. Okay. Okay, it's a bit dusty this unit, we should have dusted it. Okay, straight away I can see a leak. Yeah, it's a little leak there, we just need to tighten this uh, Jubilee clip up. Okay, you may be able to see the pump running in the background. There, I don't know if you can see that actually, but it's probably around about a foot under the water's surface, maybe half a metre. There we go, sorted the leak on that pump. Nothing that another Jubilee clip can't sort out. So we've got no leaks there. Uh, looks like we've got one tiny little leak on the UV filter there. But you can see the rate at which this is coming out, that is coming out as fast as the municipal water supply in the marina. So uh, that's pretty good. Quite pleased about that. So I'm just going to let that run for a few minutes. So I'm just going to tend to this tiny little leak down here and uh, take it from there. Don't get my builders bun. Is it working yet? Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, it's working. Uh, we had a leak, quite a big leak at the front end of the filter housing and I put two Jubilee clips on either end rather than one and that solved that one. We've got a similar problem at the other end. Um, you know, we're used to this kind of thing. Nothing ever works first time, does it? <laughs> uh, but it's, I mean, it's 
relatively insignificant. I've just got to try and locate where that leak's coming from. In terms of its actual production though, I don't, I don't see why it should actually affect uh, the water production. So we can carry on and test the water that's coming out the other end and possibly even fill our tanks. Uh, we'll just have to run the unit outside until I isolate this, this little, tiny little leak. But we're not going to fill our tanks until we're sure of the quality, is that right? Well, that's the next step, is to get our testing strips and test that water that's coming out the other end. Okay, so if it's all okay, are we then going to try... Oh, excuse me, somebody's coming. Oh, hello. Somebody's coming to get involved. Hello. Um, <laughs> okay, so we will eventually send off one of these expensive don't know if you want to we haven't got the money for that they're not cheap they're really not cheap and the problem is is that they won't test everything that those strips test they'll do one test for heavy metals then they'll do another test for your ph balance that kind of thing um, the cheapest test i found was 70 quid and they start going into 200 300 quid per test so um, for the time being we'll just use these strips okay I mean, remember, we've got the reverse osmosis at the other end. So in theory, the water coming out that, that we're actually going to be drinking should be fine. Should we try it on Marley first? Oh, <laughs> oh poor Marley. In this highly scientific experiment, you can see Liz is now taking a sample of canal water. Now this has had uh, tomato fertiliser in it, so we're giving it a good flush out first. So she's dunking her watering can a few times into the water. And then we have our testing kit, which is down there, which we should do in daylight because it involves lots of different shades of colours. So as Liz does that, I'll just quickly show you, this is our testing kit, test spurt, test strip. Just got this off Amazon, came quite highly rated, but uh, I never really trust Amazon reviews. After all, none of us are scientists, are we? But it's a start. Um, but it looks at things like nitrates, uh, chlorine, bromine, and the heavy metals like copper, iron and lead, nickel and sulphites. And we're just going to make a note of these. We're going to do a few tests of each water, but we've already done one lot of the tap water coming out of the sink. So we've got a good rating on that, because remember it's going through two filters and that's municipal water. So the numbers are pretty low. Right, making sure our hands aren't wet so we don't contaminate the testing strip. We take one of these out, put the others to one side, and you put this in the water for literally two seconds. The results are almost immediate, but we have to wait for up to 60 seconds for a couple of the results. Okay, so I don't know how well that comes out in the camera, but all of these are colour coordinated. And we take the uh, pot, the strips came in, and there's a little key on the back, and we just work our way down. And I'm going to read them out, and this is going to make a note of them. All we are testing for are things like heavy metals, sulphides, and nitrates. It's not testing for things like E. coli. And that is where you have to spend a lot of money to get it tested. So. This is where we're going to rely on the reverse osmosis, of course, to guarantee that the water we drink will be free of anything like that. I'm happy to say, actually, the water coming into the pump is pretty clean anyway, but not that that tells you anything. At least it's not murky and dark and dirty. Okay, as you can see, we're filling up our tanks now and it's coming out at quite a rate. Now, one thing that we haven't discussed is adding additives to our water. And I looked this up and I've come across these. The preliminary results from our test showed little difference between the municipal water and the water coming out of our stage one off-grid water system. But we want to take extra precautions by using an additive. One of our viewers recently pointed out that both chlorine and hydrogen peroxide will corrode stainless steel tanks, so we needed an alternative. Troclocene sodium is slightly different in that it slowly releases chlorine in low doses over time. These effervescent tablets will treat Legionella, cholera, typhoid, amoebic dysentery and salmonella. Although the packaging doesn't say it, troclocene sodium is also effective against E. coli. We add two tablets to our 500 litre water tank and allow them to sit for 30 minutes before drawing water from our taps. 
We're on our way back. Jamie's done everything he intended to do with the water maker. And as you can see, the uh, temperature and the weather situation has changed quite a lot. So I'm quite glad we're going to go back and hunker down because we've got a storm coming. Oh, hello. <laughs> so, um, first of all, are you happy with what you did? Uh, you mean with the filters? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, everything has been installed and is in place. But this is now the second day that we have been drinking canal water coffee. Can you believe that? Yes, and we're absolutely fine, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we are. We're, do we're doing well. Um, the toilet hasn't seen any extra action. Everybody's happy. I'm happy. You're happy. And even Marley, who we experimented on. No, I don't mean that. Marley has some water and so far, so good. Yeah, so if you remember, we went through <clears throat> three different stages before we're actually drinking the water. And it's that final stage, the reverse osmosis unit that's under the sink, that uh, pretty much guarantees that there is literally nothing in the water except pure water. Um, the coffee is, the coffee tastes like what our coffee used to taste like on our sailboat, which is reverse osmosis water. It has a little TDS gauge, our um, total dissolved solids gauge on the water maker, and it's not even double figures. Good drinking water that tastes good should be anything between 150 to 300 TDS. Ours is nine or 10. So that does, uh, you know, possibly bring into the idea of putting in that remineralization filter just to give it back some flavor. Yeah, so that's probably something that we will do, but a little bit further down the line. Yeah, I mean, all I need to do is find those fittings. The, the filter housing is already there, the hoses are there, although they're at the incorrect gauge, uh, it should be pretty straightforward to do. Don't forget also, we did put in those uh, tablets as well uh, into the tanks. Well, I think we had the best of it. Two lovely days, able to take Marley for some nice walks in the wood and uh, around the edge of a field. We saw lots of autumnal, I don't know, grasses and a few flowers and lots of toadstools and fungi everywhere. It's very different at this time of the year, but no less beautiful than it was when we first came out here. So, yeah, off we go. Rain coming down. I think I probably need to go in now.